everybody so today we are going to be talking about how do you put a taxonomy team together in a scrappy way this is the most common way that folks have to put their teams together because oftentimes taxonomy doesn't exist yet in an organization or if it does it's more of a folksonomy where folks just add the tags that they want onto certain assets or documents or whatever it is that they're adding uh tagging to and this is the other thing if you are lucky enough to have a team then you're better off than most because most of the time it's a one person army it is usually one person they really have to be what is just determined a self-starter uh because they're gonna have to figure out a lot of things on their own and often the group that they are associated with whether they're the tech group the content group the finance group they don't usually know what taxonomists do. So you really need to be able to take on the responsibility of advocating for what you, your team, or the person that you're going to be looking for within your own organization can be able to do. So that is what we're going over in today's video. This is going to be a short mini series too for anyone that is starting their journey into the taxonomy space. And big thank you to George who suggested this content. All right, so starting off, what you're going to do is try to at least find someone in the organization that already has uh, taxonomy experience. And what does that even mean? So you have to first understand in your organization if the taxonomist is just coming up with the taxonomy or if they need to do that, plus also assigning the tags. Um, and if they themselves are assigning, that is a manual like indexing kind of activity and they need to be well versed in what that means, be able to understand that their preferred way, their correct way of indexing doesn't actually mean it's going to work for the organization. So you really do want to look for someone that knows um, ethnographic studies, meaning they do surveys, they do card sorts. Um, and if you don't know what all of these things are, um, I have other videos on the channel. I'll link down below if you want to check those out. And that is to make sure that they are understanding um, the words and the way that people browse and search within your organization while they're doing their indexing. You still need to be able to do those things even if you're doing automated indexing. But with that, you will likely need either someone that knows how to train machine learning models knows how to use some of the tools out there that do auto indexing. Um, again, in my honest review series, there's quite a few of those. I'll link them down below so you can go check some of those out. Um, or they can, the, the people that you're gonna be working with, the taxonomist, um, at least knows how to think about that problem and work with an engineer who maybe has those skills instead. So if you're going into the automation or even semi-automation, you really need to find someone that kind of understands that space. And along with that is um, if you're looking uh, for the skill sets, whether you're hiring or internal, um, you want to make sure that you specifically look for folks that know the enterprise space. So there is no, no, no badness here. Um, if, if the people you're talking to are more like catalogers or just uh, more traditional library science people, there's nothing wrong with that. There's a time and a place for that archives, um, records management, you know, those, those kind of roles are, are usually suited for, for the folks that know how to do those things in more traditional cataloging. Um, but if you're looking at enterprise, those skills are still valuable, right? But it's a, it's a slight twist on them where it's not a person browsing a stack or a person browsing physical objects all the time. It's someone, your users are using a search engine or a digital asset management tool or a uh, CMS, whether that's customer management system, content management system, <laughs> CMS stands for a lot of things. But point is, um, the folks that you're bringing on need to at least be aware of how um, the users use those systems. They don't need to be experts in those systems. Um, that's again, where like an engineer or, you know, the, the person who works on the search side or the SharePoint side or whatever it is, um, would be working with them. Um, but that's something that they're going to need to be aware of. And 
if uh, this is like a third category of, of taxonomists in the enterprise space is teaching others to do the tagging themselves. So this is still in the vein of a folksonomy where um, individuals are doing the tagging. But usually in this situation, the taxonomist is going in and writing out the rules or the scenarios that um, the users would use when they're doing their own tagging of documents. So usually this is where you have technical writers or you have authors or um, you have a third party um, that's not necessarily a customer or a user, um, but you are actually supporting them because your taxonomy and your indexing practices would be used by them. And you need to, again, be able to convince them why this way is is going to be more effective or more efficient or you know, have some kind of measure um, of your success. That's another thing to, to keep in mind when you're looking for someone is, um, unfortunately, I've, I've talked to a lot of people um, out there that even have the, the background, the education and the role of taxonomists and they don't know how to measure their success. So um, there's no one right way to do it. I've heard a lot of different ways. It's, you know, how often is the content accessed or how often does um, the, the asset get used in promotionals or, you know, how often does somebody um, have to access it and can they access it at the speed that they need? Or, you know, does it accommodate all the different various terminology that everybody would use? And, and the taxonomist should know the technical approach of using one label with many alt forms or many synonyms, um, those are just a few ways that you can measure success. But you also want to make sure that success is not just asset based, but user based. Talk to your users, do surveys with them, do more card sorts. Um, there's, there's a temptation, especially with uh, content that doesn't change a lot. Um, maybe like legal, where it's like the same kind of legal proceedings over and over again, to not go in and assess the taxonomy again um, and assess it with your users and and if it's working for the content and the users. Um, taxonomy is not a set it and forget it game, right? You have to continuously grow the taxonomy, morph it to, to the needs of, of the organization and the content and the users. And a part of that is maybe not constantly checking in and assessing it, but, you know, at least doing that once, twice, you know, maybe four times a year, maybe quarterly, right? Um, so that you know it's still working as expected, right? You don't want it to go off the rails and you're not aware of it. And then there's a lot of work that you're going to have to do and a lot of, you know, pain points with your users. So um, if you're just looking for someone that just ta does taxonomy, um, you know, all of the things that we're going over in this video are still useful because everything I just mentioned, even if the person is just making the taxonomy, they're going to need to work with the indexers or they're going to have to work with the um, end users that are doing the tagging or they're going to have to work with the engineer who is training the models to do automated indexing. Right. So even if the person you're looking at isn't doing the indexing themselves, they still need to be able to work with the tools and services and people that are going to be doing it. That said, you do need to know if they need to do indexing or not, because um, that's another misconception in the taxonomy space. And I, I'm saying taxonomy space specifically because there's no one degree that you have to do taxonomy. Um, a very common one is, um, you know, somebody with a library science or information science background, but it's certainly not the only one. There's a lot of people that accidentally right? Heather Hedden, <laughs> that uh, get into, into this. And there's a plenty of people. Um, I'll link um, a video with Heather and her book, Accidental Taxonomies down below, if you want to go check that out. And she also has a great uh, taxonomy blog where she talks about a lot of taxonomy things. So again, put that link down below if you want to go check those things out. But um, a lot of people like in business and um, marketing, uh, in legal, they get into taxonomy because there's a need in their organization. And that's what we're talking about here. So if you are looking for someone in your organization that has taxonomy and, and maybe indexing skills, you're looking for folks that really enjoy organizing. And you really want to find someone that cares about the people that are doing the search, that care about those pain points that really um, appreciates how hard or easy it is to find anything. 
And the reason I didn't stop at just organizing is because if you get someone that just loves to organize, they're going to go in as almost like a professional organizer and say, this is the best way that you can organize this. This is going to work for you. And then they don't make sure that it works for the use cases or the business needs or, or the users themselves that are using it. So be aware of that and be careful of that because you definitely want somebody that understands the people and the business piece of this as well. And so usually if you can find somebody that already has a subject matter expertise in whatever assets that you're looking at, that's going to be a bonus, right? It's not a requirement because um, like when I started my, my career, I was a taxonomist and I had zero experience doing anything mechanical at all. <laughs> you know, I did a lot of computer stuff, um, you know, coding and, you know, a lot of different things on, on you know, computer science, but I didn't do like mechanical, like engine parts and that kind of thing. But I ended up starting my, my work with um, a society of automotive engineers, which was aerospace and um, ground vehicles. And you learn, right? Like you need to make sure the person that you're bringing on is willing to learn, interested in learning, making sure that they um, can learn quickly and they have good research skills because most of the time they're their, they're their own army, right? They're not going to have anyone in your organization potentially to consult on best indexing or best taxonomy practices. So they need to be able to find those answers and also then validate those answers within their own organization. So that's another skill set to, to look for. Now, um, I, I keep describing this person as a, a one person army um, it can be a consultant, right? It can be um, even an intern. I know when I started my taxonomy work, I was an intern. And um, as an intern, uh, you you want to make sure that the person you're bringing on has um, an advisor that at least knows about these things, or you have a mentor, even if it's an external mentor that can come in and just help out. Those are the things that you're going to want to make sure that, that the person you're bringing on um, has support. Um, if you have mentors within your organization, that's that's going to be best because they're going to know your organization, but it's not a deal breaker if it's somebody externally, right? But if it's an external mentor, make sure all the criteria that we just went through um, is accounted for in the mentor too, because they're the ones who are going to be um, influencing the, the person actually doing the work with you. So obviously this person's going to need a manager and they're also going to need a tech partner. Right. So this is the team assembling, even if they don't all report together, um, you need a variety of skill sets to get taxonomy to work. So don't miss the tech piece. Right. You need to make sure that you are partnering with your tech group because they're the ones who are going to know how the search engine works or the, the digital asset management uh, system works. Um, maybe there is no system and the person you're bringing on needs to understand how to assemble the technical requirements or the business requirements for a digital asset management tool or a taxonomy management tool or an ontology management tool, right? A lot of these things that we're going over also applies to ontologists as well. So <clears throat> when you're going through and you're looking across your organization, um, I know a lot of folks have had to just cobble folks together and they don't all report to the same because sometimes getting an org change is like pulling teeth. Um, that's okay. Make sure that you just uh, get their time, um, especially if you're doing anything with vendors. You need to make sure that you have, like, even if you get the best vendor on the planet, right? Uh, uh, the consultant that's going to come in and they know so much about taxonomy and they know so much, so much, so much. Um, they don't know your org. So you need to make sure that you have someone that is at least somewhat familiar with taxonomy and indexing and the way your organization is going to use those things to partner with those you know, in those vendors and those consultants coming in and make sure you have enough time for them to work with each other. Um, if you are going that route, make sure you are looking at um, vendors that, and make sure this is in the contract, that they will stay on and train some of your staff to do the work or train some of your staff to use the tools. It's the worst feeling ever that you've just paid a ton of money for someone who's an expert to, to you know, kind of lead you into the promised land. And then they walk away and you're like, wait, I'm in the promised land. Where's the water? Where's the food? I don't know how, I don't know where the shade is. Um, you know, those are not taking that analogy a little far, but that that's not a good place to be in. So you need to make sure that um, the tech group and the taxonomist are involved in that. 
Now, if you are lucky enough to be in a, in a situation where you can build out your team a little bit more, um, again, you can do that with consultants. You can do that with um, uh, you know, interns so that at that point you should have a full-time real, meaning this is their full job. This is, you know, where they belong in their career, uh, taxonomist and, or information professional, right? Like they're not always called a taxonomist. Um, sometimes they're called digital asset managers. Sometimes they're called information architects. There's a lot of different, uh, words for taxonomist, but taxonomist is, um, becoming more, uh, well-known. And, and so once you have that person, they can then start to be the mentor or the manager, and they don't have to be uh, a people manager. They can just be managing the work and assigning the work out. Um, if you have that, you can then start to build out the team with, you know, consultants or part-timers or interns. Um, I've done that many times in my past. I know others have as well, and it works out really well because you're helping a new generation get experience doing this and you get the benefit of of having folks that are coming in fresh and and eager and and very excited to to be doing the work which is the other characteristic you want to look for you you don't it, it's not necessarily a deal breaker but someone that is excited about the work is going to do wonders for you especially because they have to again be like a self-starter kind of uh personality um one personality trait um that is sometimes hard to find in the taxonomy space. Not always. I mean, obviously I was a taxonomist and I'm a somewhat personable person. That's why I'm here on YouTube. Um, and I love to help people, right? These two characteristics, helping people is a very um, common uh, characteristic of folks that are going to do a decent job at taxonomy and indexing. Um, the other one though is um, being a good communicator. So, you know, not all folks that love to be, you know, tagging and, um, you know, organizing and doing all these things are, you know, extroverts and that's okay, right? There, there's a lot of introverts in this space. You just want to make sure that even if they are not comfortable um, verbally communicating things, that they can do written communication and they know how to not just advocate for themselves, but advocate for the processes and the data governance and whatever else that they're putting together, they need to be able to get buy-in from uh, your organization. And that means they have to be able to present an argument, not take things uh, personally. If somebody's like, no, that's the, that's, I don't like that way to do it. I've always done it this way and it worked for me. That's super, super common in this space. So you need to be able to help folks along the way, um, help convince them, give them, you know, data, or I'll link down below another video I have where um, it kind of dispels some of the thinking around taxonomy, which is eh, taxonomy is easy. It's just, you know, any monkey can do it. I had a manager tell me that once, by the way, not true. Um, <laughs> But it's not just adding tags to things willy nilly that you think makes sense. The 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 secret sauce of a good um, indexer and taxonomist is being able to create a structure of a hierarchy and uh, metadata for the terms and the labels in the taxonomy and knowing how to translate that into indexing rules and practices that then support the business. And when I say support the business, it's every person that has to access that information. So it's not just figuring out, well, I think this is how it should be done. And I think this is how I would find it. No, it is how, like thinking through how would all of the users from my user studies um, be able to find this and, and finding a way to do that in a scalable and efficient manner. That's a huge part of, of being a taxonomist, especially in an organization that doesn't have a taxonomist yet. All right, the other thing just to um, put in like a word of caution is um, taxonomy is certainly used as a browse feature on a lot of websites. Um, a lot of the time, your taxonomist will be creating a taxonomy indexing structure on the back end to support the front end. The taxonomy on the back end does not always have to be the same as the front end. In fact, it probably shouldn't be. Um, they should be mirrors of each other in a certain degree, but um, the back end needs to be more specific, um, have granularity, have more, um, you know, flexibility, whereas things on a UI somewhere are going to be harder to update or it's going to take longer to update because there's users using it, users seeing it. 
Um, so if you are working with a taxonomist, make sure that they, they uh, understand both sides because whatever they're doing on the back end will have to be able to translate it to the front end. They need to understand the impact of their work. And that's where having that partnership between you know, their tech or engineering uh, folks or them working on it themselves to understand that the trade-offs of when I change a taxonomy term on a piece of content, what's the ramification in search? What's the ramification on our recommendation system or whatever it is um, that is being used? If you're using this for data catalogs, right, which is a very big area for taxonomy, What's the ramification if you change the tagging on um, somebody's data set or, you know, can they never find it? Are there queries that are already um, hard coded uh, to to that? Um, understanding those trade offs, understanding taxonomy best practices, you might not get that right away. Right. Especially if you're, you're you know, cobbling a, a team together or you're bringing somebody from the outside, especially an intern. But those are areas that you want to make sure that you sit down with your partners either the subject matter expert partners, if your taxonomist isn't going to be an SME, but also the managers um, and the, the, the tech folks that they're gonna be working with, you all wanna sit down and kind of walk through, you know, here's the ramifications, here's the trade-offs, here's all the things that they need to be aware of so that when they're doing their job, they know where the boundaries are and where, um, hey, don't touch this button or don't release this because it goes to prod and, you know, it does these things. Um, make sure that those are called out because, um, Taxonomy tends to, any tan, any tagging structure, tends to kind of permeate through a lot of different things, a lot of different systems. People start using it in different ways. So you really need to understand, at least as much as you can going in, what the impact is in the negative way, but also in the positive way. So, you know, the advocacy and making sure that you know how to measure the success, all of that, but also being able to, if you are the manager or if you are the taxonomist, work with your manager or the tech people, um, why are you doing this, right? Taxonomy is incredibly important, but it's not always used for browse. It's not always used for search. It's not always used for UI features or recommendation engines. It could, right, in, in the space of machine learning, sometimes if you are um, training large, models of some sort on a lot of unstructured content, um, being able to at least have, you know, taxonomy tags on that content will help machine learning approaches. Um, and so maybe that's the only reason uh, you are doing taxonomy. So um, understanding all the different use cases and your impact in a positive way on the business need and your customers is going to be really important for whoever this is going to be. All right, so those are some of my tips and tricks in uh, building out a team uh, to do this. In the next few episodes, we're gonna be talking about, you know, how do you get up on best practices and how do you establish a taxonomy program? We're gonna be talking about how do you manage a taxonomy team, especially for these cobbled together types of teams where you, maybe you're not the manager of most of the people doing this. Um, you know, we're going to go through some of these other things in the vein of, of taxonomy that are not just how do you make one. I have lots of videos on that and I will link those down below, but I really hope this has been helpful to you. I hope to see you in the next few videos where we talk more about setting up your taxonomy program. And with that, I want to thank you very much and I'll catch you next time.